Всем добрый день. Мы продолжаем третий день барометра. И, конечно же, мы продолжаем говорить о коктейлях и глобальных барных трендах. О том, как и принадлежит повседневную работу бара наиболее легким способом, расскажет наш следующий спикер Мартин Шланбергер. My name is Martin Schlamberger. I work for Monin as a beverage innovation manager for Central Europe. Um, and I'm very glad to be here and to see so many people. Usually we don't have so many people for presentations. So I'm really sorry. I'm getting old, so I need notes. I have shaky hands and I have glasses now, so um, I will try to do my best. Let's get started. So in my job, I'm traveling a lot, I'm uh, responsible for eight countries, so I talk to a lot of bartenders, they share any trends with me, uh, I see many different stuff, and this I share with my uh, area, with my brand ambassadors, also with the bartenders, and in morning days, and in events like this one. So this doesn't mean I'm a better bartender than you guys, I just see Probably I see more than you. And this knowledge I would like to share with you. So, um, my topic today is going to be bar trends, sustainability and quality in modern bartending. This is very important as you might know. Sustainability is getting more and more, more and more trendy and more and more important. Because our planet is suffering, we have a lot of waste everywhere. Uh, you might all know this trend with uh, uh, the straws, for instance. I will talk about this later. So, first of all, I will give you a small overview of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, the first thing, this is just some stuff about me, it's not very important. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is positive wellness. You know what I'm talking about, right? So, we, have, we all have stress, we all have pressure, we are all worried about our future. Um, what we have to do next and tomorrow and from one uh, appointment to the next one. So, we bartender need to react on this. Even we, you know, we need to calm down our guests. We need to show them that there is no, no need to worry about everything. Everything is going well. And uh, this is also reflected in our dreams. So this means, basically, the positive wellness is, uh, means that we go on lighter dreams. You all know this trend with low ABV and no ABV, right? So since we have seed lips, for instance, seed lips it started a completely new trend, you know, because now we have something non-alcoholic, which tastes very good, and we even can make martinis. It's amazing, absolutely, I love this product. So, um, also superfoods. This is, uh, this is something you all, you all know, right, about superfoods. We, in Monin, we have uh, now a lot of superfruits, um, uh, syrups, and also purees. Right? Then plant-based uh, things, for instance, um, organic and natural. This is also very, very important nowadays, as you can see. Positive wellness is one of the most important trends right now. I, I know there's a lot of trends right now, but I just picked the most interesting for me, and in my opinion, the most important, you know? So here you have seedling, superfoods, this is, this is absolute, you can see this everywhere. You can see this in the supermarket as well as in juices, in uh, spirits, you can see it everywhere. And this you can offer to your guests. You can tell them, you can have a drink, you can relax at my bar, and at the same time, you can do something really good for your body and for your brain, maybe. Okay, so also, very important is to reuse things. Right? So, not throw everything away like you do with, um, for instance, with the, the citrus fruits, you know. You make um, uh, a citrus peel, orange peel, 
uh, you squeeze it on your drink and then you throw it, right? So, or you squeeze, you squeeze the orange and then you throw it. Instead of using the peel, instead of using the citrus stock. We're going to talk about this also. So, I want you to think about how can I reuse uh, my ingredients. You, you, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Oh, zero waste. Yeah. Sorry? Zero waste. Zero waste, yes. Zero waste is a big word, you know, because zero is, is really difficult, but at least less waste. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, just ask me. We're not going to do this in the end, because nobody will keep the question in mind. Just, I don't know, raise your hand or just ask me. Okay, so uh, basically, less is more, <coughs> right? So I know we have these trends with very big uh, garnish and with side garnish and with beautiful glasses. It's nice, but it's a lot of costs as well. It's a lot of effort, it takes time, it takes uh, employees and so on. So less is sometimes more. It takes less time to prepare the drink less effort to make the drink, and less uh, human resources, you know? Good. So, some examples for how to reuse uh, and work sustainable is, for instance, the dehydrated uh, fruits. We all know this, right? I use it many times for presentations because I cannot take fresh fruits on, on the plane. Most of the time it's, it's getting bad, so I use uh, dehydrated fruits. It's easy, but looks very good, even has a nice aroma, it's okay. So fermentation, fermentation is also a big trend. Is it also a big trend here? Yes. yes? yes. Fermentation? Yeah. So I, I do, from time to time, I do a fermented uh, lemon juice or lime juice. It's very nice, has a very nice taste. You all know what I'm talking about. Fermented uh, ingredients, fermented fruits, <coughs> yes? Okay. And uh, so it's also sustainable, instead of throwing the stuff, I can reuse it. Less garnish is also a big thing, you know. Instead of using a very expensive garnishes, um, just skip it. So from time to time it's not necessary. If you have a nice martini, why should you garnish it, you know. Take a nice glass and uh, your customers are happy. Also the waitress, by serving, they are not worried about dropping the garbage. Uh, okay, then homemade infusions. We all do homemade infusions, right? Are you doing this? Yes. So there are certain ways how to do this. I'm gonna, I, I did uh, homemade infusions here. Uh, for my, for my uh, presentation, I used the rapid infusions uh, technique. I will show you later. Good. So the next big thing is uh, is sustainability, earth intelligence. How our marketing department is calling this. Um, so we all see these beautiful pictures. I was looking for this. I, I found millions, but those are the worst. Uh, we are throwing so many straws, and this is completely useless. It's ugly. It's useless, and it's completely. Uh, destroying our nature. So think about this, you know, is it necessary to use this? Is it, is it necessary to use 100 plastic cups and plastic bottles? Um, so try to avoid it, try to decrease this. This is very good. I'm not saying we cannot do this from one day to the other, it's not possible, but we can start to, de to uh, decrease it because this if you look at this and at some beaches, we are responsible for that. We make the drinks in the happy hour, you know, like if the people are partying, throwing the, the, the straws somewhere, they don't care, they are drunk. So it's our fault actually. So, um, it's very, very important, this zero waste, you know. I know, like I said, it's not, it's not, uh, actually possible to, to have zero waste, but less, at least. So, use, uh, use uh, reusable bottles, even I, when I use um, the, the easy, you know ISI, the, the capsules, okay? It's an Austrian company, just say it. 
Um, <laughs> this is why I know um, you can reuse those capsules. You can send it back to the, to the company and they refill it. So, because it's a lot of waste. It's, uh, it's a big thing, you know, it's, uh, a lot, uh, it's uh, metal. And instead of throwing it, um, you can send it back. Usually in every country you, have, you, can, you can collect it somewhere. I don't know uh, where, it, because you have an importer, usually they collect it. Um, you can see here a lot of things like room temperature cocktails. This is also a big thing. Uh, you have this homegrown uh, trend. So everything is natural. And I know where it comes from. This is the, the most important. Because even when I go to the shop to metal or wherever, and I buy a fruit and it says organic. What is organic? What is the definition of organic? You never know. So because I don't know, uh, it, it might be no poison on it, but still wax. You know, because all the citrus fruits, they have wax on the skin, so uh, you can keep it, they have a longer shelf life. So, you never know. But if you grow it at home, you know exactly where it, where it comes from. You know, uh, you are like spraying and uh, whatever, you know, uh, taking care like a baby. So, and this, you can also, Give to your customers. This is some extra USP, unique selling proposition. This you know, right? USP. This is what is the difference be between me and uh, the bar next to mine. Why the customers should come to my bar and not to the next one? That's the USP. This is something you need to think about. Why? Don't think about your bow tie, if it's green or purple. Think about your USB, what you are offering to your guests, what is your special USB. Good. Then, emotions. Emotions are very, very important because we keep in mind the emotions. We are connecting memories with emotions. This I've learned from Ingus in, uh, in where, where did you teach me about this? In, uh, Italian, yeah. So, we directly, this I did keep in mind. Uh, we, we uh, connect taste with memories. So if, for instance, I don't know, vanilla reminds you on uh, sitting with your grandparents in, under the Christmas tree, something like this. So this is directly uh, connected. So emotions are very, very important. Uh, emotions is, is more important than to impress the people. Nobody wants to be, to be impressed, because if you are impressed, you hate me, you know? But if I am a cool guy, you like me, and then you will come to my bar. Right? Okay. And also new techniques. You all know Rotavap uh, technique, right? Rotavap is, is, is okay. Uh, and uh, also ultrasonic is now a big deal, but right now it's very, very uh, expensive, like Rotavap five years ago. So this all let increase the cost, the cost per uh, product sold. Good. Any questions so far? No. You all look uh, very interested. <laughs> good. So let's talk about the cost. The cost of goods sold. That's very, very uh, important because um, the cost, they are decreasing our profit. And if we use high quality spirits, beautiful glasses, we have a lot of employees, you know, because we are making uh, high quality drinks. Um, uh, we are using, we have a beautiful wooden bar, handmade, handcrafted everything. So this all costs a lot of money. And uh, so you need to think about your cost to decrease them a little bit, not too high. Uh, eventually, you use too much technology. Maybe you can decrease it. You can. Maybe it's not. Uh, it's not important to use a rotabar. Maybe you can do this with a cheaper technology. You know. So this all is very important. For instance, I was uh, with my company. I have a. I, I'm the owner of a bar catering company, and uh, we have been to Cannes in France last week for the for the TV and Multimedia Awards and we were buying those, uh, those uh, what was it, bamboo straws, you know, 
for, to be sustainable and not use plastic straws. So we, we, I paid a hundred, uh, for a hundred straws I paid 12 euros. This is a lot of money, you know? So maybe you should skip it. Is it really important to have a straw? Is it necessary for your drink? Think about it. Maybe you can use a different glass, then you can skip the straw. And also the metal straws and the wooden straws, uh, it's not really hygienic. I don't know, I mean, I tried this and uh, it doesn't matter how you put it in the dishwasher, it never gets really uh, clean. Good. So, uh, also pre batch drinks is a big deal, right? Have you, have you uh, ever done this before, pre batch uh, cocktails? Um, I, I have a friend in, in, in uh, Bucharest, in Romania, and he told me he has a big, he has a beautiful bar, a beautiful bar in the center of Bucharest, and he told me he had a big issue with bartenders because they were lazy, you know, one bartender used uh, the V-shaped glass, the other bartender used a different glass for the same drink. Uh, the, the, the taste of the drinks were different all the time, you know. So he was really angry about this. So he fired over the bartenders and renamed his bar. Now the name of the bar is Fix, Botanical Bar, and all the drinks are pre batched He has a big shelf behind the bar with bottles with pre-patched drinks and he just hiring students or uh, I don't know really people not not educated people because all they need to do is to take a glass put ice in the glass pour the drink that's it no garnish no straw no nothing easy <coughs> and he sells high mixology drinks for a very cheap price because no effort he's doing the drinks by himself easy Good. So, the next thing is very important is the local. This is what I'm uh, talking about when I talk about... Yes? Um, sorry. Uh, how does your French fight with the wastes uh, from the French prepaid card? He's reusing everything. He's absolutely reusing everything. Um, like I said, if he's squeezing, Something he's uh, I learned a lot from him. He's using the skin, uh, only organics. He's only using organic stuff, and uh, there is not much waste. He's also thinking about what kind of cocktails to prepare. So it's a it's about the concept. You need to think about before, you know. Okay. So one of the concepts can be this. Local. This is very trendy right now. Local is a mix between global and local. You understand? So that means uh, local ingredients, uh, like here the blood sausage I heard is a local ingredient, but not uh, the best ingredient maybe for a cocktail, maybe for a bloody berry. Um, so you to use local ingredients uh, in cocktails and mix it with uh, global ingredients. So this is a this is a big trend and this make is called global. So for instance you mix your global your local uh, ingredients with Asian or African or uh, South American ingredients. You understand what I mean? This is also good for storytelling. Storytelling is a big thing because we are not selling a drink and then Go, next customer, go, next customer. We try to sell a story, we try to sell a concept, we try to sell an idea, an emotion, you know? Like, when I come home, I had a really nice time here, in here, and uh, I'm creating a cocktail which is reflecting my emotions I had here. This is, and then I can tell, it was really nice to be on stage, I felt like a superstar, you know, so many people are watching me. So this I can tell to my customers, and they, they can feel maybe the same emotions as I do. So this hybrid, I, I call it hybrid concepts because it's a mix of two uh, concepts. 
Um, for instance, tea cocktails, you know, teas from Asia, but uh, you combine it with, uh, I love to, to use mushrooms for, uh, for cocktails because mushrooms, are, they have a lot of flavor, they are very complex. I will talk about this later. Uh, matcha cocktails, for instance. Uh, matcha is a really nice product. It's also um, a beautiful color. You can mix it. I, I even did a coffee tonic with matcha. It's amazing this combination. Co combination of uh, coffee and matcha. You need to try. Lovely. Okay, Japanese tea. Tea. You make a tea cocktail Japanese style. It's also nice. So you have endless opportunities with these combinations. Local. That's the word. Here you have some uh, some interesting drink concepts. Um, it's really nice to mix black mezcal is still a trend. I know everybody is telling to the people, next year or this year is going to be the, the, the big year for mezcal. These ideas in 15 years. <laughs> um, actually, the mezcal never made it. But I really like mezcal, especially when it's, a really, when it's a really smoky one. If you, you don't need to make a picture of this presentation. If, if you want, just come after the... Uh, after the presentation, uh, we send the presentation Martin in Monique community. We show the QR code, uh, you get the presentation of... Yeah, so it's not necessary. Because if you make pictures, it's not... Uh, <laughs> It's not it's blurry all the time, it's not like, uh, easy to read. Okay, so uh, global, sustainable, I have everything. Natural is, is very important, naturality is absolutely... People are nowadays reading the back labels all the time, right? Yeah, people, they, did, they never did this 10 years ago, but now everybody is taking the bottle, turn it around and reading the back label. What is this E number? What is this? What does this mean? So sometimes, an E number is not bad, you know, because uh, sometimes we use E numbers just to shorten down a little bit the, the back label. We, in morning we do that and we stop with this because um, our range is 98% natural in terms, of, uh, in terms of ingredients. Just we have some coloring agents uh, for the blue because blue is, uh, doesn't exist in the nature, only the butterfly pea, and this is prohibited in the European Union. It's, we have a butterfly pea syrup, money, but only in Asia. So as soon as it is uh, allowed in Europe, we will bring it. Uh, even our, for instance, even our bubblegum syrup is 100% natural. Good. So, would you like to try some drinks? <laughs> I, want, I, wanted to, I wanted to feed all of you, but I did not expect so many people, that's too much. But we're going to do, uh, my uh, beautiful colleague here uh, is going <laughs> to prepare the drinks. He's a better bartender, I'm good in coffee, he's good in making drinks. Um, so you can try it after the presentation, because we cannot pass it around with actually too many people. Huh? Yes. Okay. So the first one we gonna we gonna do is the morning sip. Um, I I want to show you uh, this actually I did for a customer. He had red grenade syrup, and he was like, I have twenty bottles of red grenade. What can I do with this? I have no clue. Uh, he bought this for an event. But it did not happen so so well. So he had a leftover from a lot of bottles, um, and he was asking me, "What can I do with this?" And I was uh, playing around with our pentel a little bit. So I came up with this with this combination. Um, I mixed the pentel with uh, Lagwood ten years. The smoky, salty taste of uh, of the Lagwood was very well with this sweet, uh, honey taste of the, of the creme brulee. Um, then, I use mushroom coffee. Have you tried mushroom coffee before? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't like mushroom in my coffee. I know, mushroom coffee is a big upcoming trend. Not, 
like I said, I, I, I'm looking for, uh, for things all the time and I try to buy a lot of things from Amazon. Um, and mushroom coffee is very trendy because uh, mushrooms are very high in MSG, monosodium glutamate. You know this? This is the umami taste. Uh, all kinds of mushrooms, but especially uh, shiitake mushrooms, for instance, uh, they are very, very high in MSG, but all the mushrooms uh, have a high content of MSG. MSG, uh, monosodium glutamate, is a flavor enhancer, a natural flavor enhancer. So if you put it in your drink, it's, it's not like you have the taste of mushroom in, on your tongue, but it's boosting the flavor, it's enhancing the flavor this time. You know? So, mushroom coffee, for instance, in UK is a big thing. You can buy this online and uh, even some, uh, some baristas have it already. You can even do it homemade. It's just dried mushrooms, you, you grain it and mix it with uh, coffee. So, you just answered my question. I wanted to ask how do you use it? Yes. Yes. You can, here, I use mushroom coffee like this liquid mushroom coffee, but you can do also an infusion, but basically the, the mushroom coffee itself, it's just grey coffee and grey mushrooms mixed together in a perfect balance, you know, you need to think, I'm, I am barista, but I just did the training, I'm not, I'm bartender, you know. <laughs> For me, you know, I think it's always barista and bartender, it's, uh, they are enemies. So, uh, you need to have a perfect balance of the mushrooms and which kind of mushrooms you use and which kind of coffee, acidic coffee, bitter coffee, sweet coffee, fruity coffee, so you need to think about uh, the, the ratio. I use, uh, I think I took it somewhere, the mushroom coffee. I, no, I did not. Maybe afterwards I can show you what kind of coffee I use. So you can also use fresh fruit espresso, of course, but the mushroom coffee is the flavor enhancer here. We, you, use, you need flavor carrier for your cocktails. You all know what is a flavor carrier. We have three of them. Fat, sugar and alcohol. All, this, all three of them are nowadays, ooh, alcohol. No, I don't like sugar. Oh, it's even worse. So in fat, you know, not too much. But you need this. If you, if you have a glass of water and you put uh, lemon juice inside, it, the taste is flat, right? You don't have a full mouth, uh, like strong taste. But if you put a, a few drops of sugar inside, or fat, even fat, uh, or alcohol, then you have a big body. So this is why you need a flavor carrier. A cocktail without a flavor carrier is not going to taste well. Right? Yes? No? And, <laughs> and a flavor enhancer can, uh, can be good to push it, to, to make it even better tasting. And for this, we need MSG. You, it's in the kitchen, it's the same. The chefs, they put in uh, um, mushrooms in sauces, for instance. You don't even have, you don't even have the taste, but you have a stronger, a more complex taste. And complexity is very important for us bartenders. You agree? Good. Okay, I, 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 will, I will speed up. I'm talking too much of the time, I know. <laughs> so our next drink, I'm talking about sustainability. Sustainability is very important, as I said in the beginning. Uh, here I'm using citrus stock. You know what is citrus stock? No. This is citrus stock when you squeeze citrus fruits. Right? So what do you do with this? You throw it, right? Yeah. But it's a treasure, guys. This is a treasure. Because here you have the etheric oils in the skin. Here is the taste, here is the flavor, here is your aroma. So this you can use for infusions. This you can use for syrups even. You can push a syrup, you can buy one in syrup. Uh, um, and you can enhance the flavor with a citrus stock. 
Um, here I did a citrus stock infusion with dry gin. I used dry gin, not you know this basil and I don't know whatever inside olives. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this kind of gins. I used really dry London dry gin um, for this uh, citrus stock infusion. So if you do this, then you have a more complexity inside. You have this uh, slightly bitter taste, you have the aromas and the etheric oils. And the rich yogurt helps you for the, um, uh, for the texture. You have a really smooth and nice texture and uh, a very nice uh, color as well. Good. And on top, I put some uh, fresh uh, grated uh, dark chocolate. First of all, it looks very nice. And second, you have a strong uh, smell, a strong aroma, in your house, which is very important. You want, you have, I want to activate all the senses. Good. And last, but I, I, uh, I call this treasure. You know, like a treasure and trash. Give him a, give him a, an applause, please. We still have to wait for a few minutes, I need to do that, but we want to speed it up a little bit, so he uh, agreed to help me a little bit. Good. And the last, the last thing I'm, uh, I want to show you is uh, a mushroom old fashion. I'm a big fan of old fashion, so I'm always trying to, um, to do twists on old fashion because it's a very honest, very simple drink and uh, I like the taste of pure spirit. So, maple syrup was also this kind of thing. What can I do with maple syrup? Only the Americans use it, you know? It's true, but uh, maple syrup and uh, malt whiskey is such a beautiful combination. You need to try it. It's I mean, absolutely incredible. So, and here I did a mushroom infusion. Just a rapid infusion. You, I was asking you already if you know this. You use this small siphon for rapid infusion. You just put inside your um, your whiskey and some dried mushrooms. Buy it in an Asian shop if you have the chance. They are really good. It's very good quality. And then just load it with a, with a green charger and leave it. Depends on. Um, how intense you want the taste. Good. So this is this is very uh, a very easy um, version. You don't need to do uh, maturation for three, four, five minutes. It's done in 10, 15 minutes. You can do it even on the spot. You know. So um, the bitters they are increasing the complexity and uh, also the aroma. And this is very important. You need to. Like, when you touch something, the haptics needs to be perfect, 